Here, I'm going to, we'll get started. Don't want to keep John from his appointed train, whatever that one might be. As soon as possible. Yeah, as soon as possible. Um, all righty. Uh, Mike's not going to be here this morning. I don't think he may, may be here a little bit later. Uh, did you all get a copy and had a chance to go over the minutes that were sent out? Yes. Are there any corrections, amendments, changes? No. I have a motion to, to, to approve. John and then Duke. So second, all in favor? I have to do the minutes. So just give me a second to. Okay, John, Duke, minutes. All right. We had a <clears throat> we had a meeting, a design development workshop last week, and uh, a number of things were, were resolved. I think the three of us were the only ones who were there, right? Correct. So I'll let you all report on it. Yeah, so um, we went over the design in general. Um, uh, so we spent quite a bit of time looking at the media center, the new location for that. Um, we had relocated it to an area across from the gym, giving it greater ceiling height and consolidating the, the two different media center spaces, which had been on two levels. Um, thought it would be better to have it all on one level. And the design, I think, is coming along really nicely. Uh, the media center is going to be on multiple levels, but there's a six foot difference between the upper level and the lower level. Um, and then there'll be a transition area in between. So um, that's all coming along really nicely, looking at all flexible furniture so that the space can be used in a variety of ways, except perhaps the perimeter furniture will be built in. Um, and I guess the other concern in that area, something we need to follow up on, is that the design of that room is based, uh, they're, they're putting a ramp, um, they're not putting a ramp into the space, they're using a ramp uh, in the hallway, and um, SLAM still needs to get approval on that as far as access, that that's, that's allowable. There'll be stairs within the space between the multiple levels, that there's an adjacent ramp in the hallway, and whether that is acceptable. So anyway, I think they're, they're meeting our um, concerns. The previous design we you know, kind of pushed back on a bit. This is a new location working well. Um, on the flip side, the art space, which had previously been in that area, is now on the lower level and adjacent to the courtyard and is able to use the outside courtyard space, overflow the art space, which we think is a real positive development. And then the OTPT space will be up above. Um, other than the media center, we looked at um, some about the other shifts in the program, like I said, resulting from that. And then we also looked at um, trying to get a little bit more natural light into the um, spaces outside of each pod, the shared spaces, which, um, which was achieved by SLAM, moved a bit of program around. Um, Luke was involved in that to make sure that the appropriate spaces were in the appropriate areas, um, as in, I think there was one um, speech class that he recommended stayed near the uh, kindergarten and whatnot. So I think working with Luke and shifting the spaces around, things are going really well. Um, yeah, we looked at the site plan. Um, I think the other um, big area that we spent some time on was um, was the enabling plan. Dave Cravenzola was there and kind of rolled out a plan with a lot of notes on it and really talked through in detail how the enabling plan is going to work, um, and, which I think was really helpful for everybody. I actually had to leave a little bit early, so I don't know, Katie and Kip might want to follow up on that. Um, I think that's a good summary. I agree with everything you said. Um, I would think that the, the other piece that came out of the enabling that uh, we thought was important to the student experience was um, the relocation of the playground. So currently, where the playground exists is um, going to be part of the construction site as it's up by those upper fields. Um, and that playground structure is relatively new. And the playground structures in the back are really just very decrepit. Um, so it seemed to make the most sense to have that newer structure moved to the back so that the children can still use that um, during the construction, which I think will go a long way to providing what's going to be a much more limited space, but has the other options, so. Diane, was there any discussion or had they gotten to any <coughs> point in the design where they changed the back of the building where the now the library media center is going to be? There was some conversation around that. Um, as far as the glass and 
Yes. More open. It looks out onto the woods now. Yeah, um, certainly. I think there was more glazing. Um, uh, I um, I don't think that it. I think it's going to continue to be sort of the fabric of the building. I don't think it's going to look like anything kind of different from the rear necessarily. And they still have those elevations to provide to us. We okay. haven't really seen elevations at the back of the. Um, I think Amy had mentioned that next time they would show center. more. Yeah. of the back side. Okay. But certainly, and they gave us some really great 3D images of the library from the interior view looking in in all directions. And it was much more glassy and open than it had been previously. And they, the other thing that's important to mention is they spent some time um, laying out the library reimagined program into the library space. And there, there are five different zones that are established in that program. And they were very carefully looked at in terms of different spaces. Again, all very flexible and can we moved around for the most part, but um, those spaces were being considered, which I think was important. So it's meeting the Darien standards of where we're going with the libraries. They have all these slides, by the way, on their website. It's <coughs> workshop right. number five, and you can see it all. Uh, the only thing I'd add was that we, because of the three, I think it came down to three different levels in the library, the question was, <coughs> Do, we, do each of these spaces need at least one exit? Do they need two? And the only way we could do two would be to go out toward the south, and that would mean we have to build up a whole ramp and everything else. And I think what they were trying to do is through design and, and maneuvering of what size each place was, end up with, on the two lower levels, one exit only required, and they were going to check with the fire marshal. And the upper level, there was easily to put two exits in without having to go outside and build up a whole new ramp and everything else. And the other thing that was decided uh, after Dr. Adley uh, made it clear that the amount of space in the building as designed was sufficient that we're not going to talk anymore about adding the extra um, classroom off of the ELP wing for now. Okay? So that was, and we had to do that really to move on to get our, our, our this is the, this is the structure. To, to just clarify the exits, so these are exits to the outside. No, uh, these might be uh, for the, for this room okay, here, no, but but I the ramp the ramp they were going to bring all the way back to here. Okay, and, and the right. idea was we don't want exits coming out. Yeah, my concern is that the exits should be to the outside as a requirement. If it's a requirement, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is the design of that. But for the media center, I think all the exits are to the hallway, which then takes you to the outside. Right. There were no direct exterior no exits, direct from, exits from the library. Right. The idea was to be to have two exits here for the upper level, an exit for this one and an exit for this one, provided they were under a thousand square feet. Right. That's the key. That was the key. Yeah. Like a classroom. Yep. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else we want to add? I think that covers it. Okay, it is on the website, by the way. Um, oh, I, yeah, I should add that the, the enabling uh, also included a, a design of the uh, classrooms during the enabling phase with the use of the portable as a, as a, as a library rather than a cafeteria. Yes. And then we spent some time discussing the new um, classroom spaces that are going to be located in the library and <coughs> talk to Dave Cranvenzola to ensure that we're going to have the proper HVAC and lighting and even talked about putting um, a very inexpensive temporary window into one location where there's no current window which room's going to serve as a classroom we felt it's important to have natural light so um, yeah All right um, well, we have a pre we have a presentation coming up tonight, and uh, Katie set this one up. Are you all set for this one? Um, I think so. I'm um, been working with um, Amy and Dave to put together um, an outline as to what points we'll cover and what slides we'll show. Um, Amy, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen the full slide deck from Amy yet, though, um, so I'm, I'm hoping to see that beforehand today. Um, I was also curious how many committee members might be able to attend tonight. I'm going I'm to attend. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. I know that um, Nick can't attend, and I know that, uh, well, obviously Randy's out of town. Okay. 
Um, is it there was something floating around that the presentation would be similar to what we presented to the Board of Ed and to the planning? Department? Yeah, that, that's right. Um, so uh, when I was reviewing the slides and sort of the covering the points that we had discussed in the last design development meeting as to where we were at and what we wanted to show, it did seem that um, the Board of Ed presentation was, was a very good jumping off place um, with a little bit of um, a little bit of tweaking to the audience, um, you know, talking about playgrounds moving, talking a bit more about um, what the enabling phase is going to be like, and then obviously um, Dave's part about assuring um, security and safety during construction, but largely the same content. I don't think we, um, from our last meeting uh, last week, I think that it was pretty clear that the exact um, uh, arrangement for parking and um, ingress, egress during during the construction phase what was to be determined, right? right. We're not, so we don't have an answer on that one, right? Right. I think that the, the discussion around parking is, is more going to be, um, you know, that the parking is going to be limited from what we have now during construction, and that's something that we'll all have to work through. Um, and then I think also just um, mentioning as part of the new design um, what the, the traffic flow is designed to be, you know, with the separate bus loop and how ELP will dismiss from a different entrance, but they'll have a mean, just really what the school is set up to function in day to day. So um, the concept of the flow. Yes. Yet to be tweaked and fine tuned. Right. Yeah. And the other one that, because I talked with David Cravenzola about the um, working hours. I talked with Jeremy Ginsburg about that, and normally uh, 7 o'clock is the start, but right. seven, 7 would put their exit time at 3.30, which is, mm -hmm, can't right. do that. So, and we can't do it after that because we, we as David said, we're not going to get the, the tradespeople or they'll charge us an extra fee to come down in, in heavy traffic or go back home in heavy traffic. So, we're going to have to start a little bit earlier. The exact time is not yet determined. So, I, I mean, Dave had mentioned that for the purpose of this presentation, that it might be more a discussion as to, um, you know, that, that they are aware of the. Um, the drop off and the pickup times of the school, and we'll certainly be working around that so as not to be having deliveries competing with school buses and parent pickup, which I think is sufficient at this point just to say yep. that we're aware and we'll plan around. Right. So, is there any discussion? I know it leads to a ripple effect of a lot of other things, but around changing the start time of the school? Um, so Since I, that's a later I, start time. Yeah, to I, some other I think school. that would probably be a conversation for, for Dr. Adley to weigh in on because, it, it, as you said, it, it would have a ripple effect. Um, so that wasn't something that had come up okay. so far. So at the moment, uh, we, we try to just jump in. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of um, but just jumping in with uh, what we try to do with that meeting is just make sure what you got a sense of that the major things are on the table. Right? Um, a discussion about a start time wasn't really done for for this meeting type thing. Right. So, so we have to, that needs to be deferred for further discussion. We, yeah, specifically, we're just, yeah. yeah. There are people who are responsible working on it, and we don't have the answer yet today. Yeah, so I think the overall goal is really just to sort of, to provide like an information session as to like, this is where we are. Um, and I, I think it would be nice if we had, you know, if time was allowing to have a bit of a Q&A, but Luke actually had a good idea as far as some of those very specific concerns about, you know, like, should we change the start time? Should we, um, about handing out cards for people to just leave their questions with, and then, you know, the committee can um, contact those people after the fact directly to work out those things, as opposed to, you know, kind of taking a 100-person presentation down a rabbit hole, so. Yeah, so now that it's been it's kind of, vetted a little bit early on with planning and zoning. It was kind of rolled out at Board of Ed. There's a lot of folks that attend some of those meetings. Any specific hot topics or anything that you think may come up that you're hearing from the community? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that the playgrounds w were going to be a big one. That was going to be, um, you know, like uh, with the kids in the, on a campus that's occupied by a construction site, like what kind of outdoor access do they have? So I think that making that decision last week about taking the new playground and moving it, um, I think that's gonna go a long way. Um, and then I think some of the other questions that I've heard about, you know, were really about part of the building being demolished and like where are those classrooms gonna go. So I think that will be really nice for Dave to be able to come up and, um, you know, he had sent me some examples of 
temporary walls that he had built and for classrooms. So I think that visual will be very helpful in to parents understanding that their kids are going to be in classrooms. You know that they're not going to be in partitions and closets and tucked. So um, so I think I think that the content that we've discussed um, should be on target for most of the concerns. That playground has to be sorry, just has to be non-negotiable, and I think we we made that decision. Just to move it, yeah. And uh, <coughs> there also got a very good picture <coughs> of where, uh, you, I think it was the Maritime yes. Center, where he showed the, the uh, kind of wall that it, it created. It was 12 feet high. It was very a, large. a solid 12 feet high wall, and then a chain link fence, depending upon what they were trying to screen off, as an example of what they do to screen off construction area from the school, which I thought was a good picture. Yeah. And hopefully he'll show that. Right. Right? Yeah, no, I asked him to include that as well. Um, I think it was nice that it was local. It was, you know, like a large scale project and those images did seem to like just be very reassuring in that like this was the path that you would follow into the building and that was clearly like a zone. They're making it part of the kind of a learning experience internally over there too, the construction that's going on internally. So Well that's you know. part of what A and P does. A and P yeah. and the they yeah. That's part of their deal. Yeah. The um, one of the things I just didn't know whether we've gotten so far away from because it, it was now long in our history is people may wonder why we're choosing that particular site. I just thought we have to remind ourselves that we did have initially a design. I think it was called Town Square or something like that that went down the hill, but that was going to be I think three phases. It was going to take 36 months at least yep. and it was going to be you know extremely you talk about having kids close to construction it was going to continue for you know, three years and we decided not to do that for that very reason the length of time and, and expensive good point yeah. I, people may have forgotten that we, we, we almost forget it because it's been so no, long I, I, but that's a good point um, I think that in the beginning um, of the introductions I think that like a very brief sort of just reminder as to like where the project has come from um, is helpful right that you know, this committee has, has been in existence for over a year now and um, that we've hired people and sort of where we got to this point, I think, um, I think is valuable. You know, the, the other thing is too, we've done it before. I lived through with kids in the Tokenine School, building a school right smack next to another school. Right. And these folks are professionals. They've done it before. We, we did it with a high school. We right. did it with Tokenine. So it's, you know, it's been done before. Right. And we don't, we don't have a solution today yet <clears throat> about where construction vehicles will be parking. But we can only say that we're working on that as well. You know. I think he said that, that, that they would have to do something remote. For yeah, but we don't have that remote spot yeah. yet. That's, where, that's what I'm saying. We don't have it all buttoned up yet. Mm -hmm. We're still uh, trying to get that together. Okay. And then just to follow up on the uh, design development work we have uh, we're expecting a presentation at our next meeting from SLAM of the final DD and um, so um, I guess we need to discuss too whether that includes an estimate um, there was an interim estimate done I'm not we haven't seen that yet so that's something we need to I'm supposed to see it today I thought okay we will see it probably Friday I talked to Dave yesterday. Or did you? Okay. Um, he just wanted to run a few more things by SLAM so that they're in sync with one another. They've got it 95% done, and that's his target. It's Friday. Because they also, uh, Jen has asked for <coughs> spending for the next 12 to 18 months for bonding purposes, and he was going to put that, when he had his estimate, lay in some you know big payments out in that area. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> the reason for that is that we're at a an historically good point right. to do all that, whether it's new debt or refinancing of existing debt. And so we've asked Jen not just for this project, but whether anything could be accelerated with regard to the bonding for uh, current and rebonding for current indebtedness or uh, for future expenditures. So we're looking at that. And then the board finance meeting later this month, we're having our uh, advisors to, uh, on uh, these debt matters to come present. So we're going to be going through that in some detail, just in some detail, just to make sure we're fresh on the rules and just how far we can push that to take full advantage of this uh, favorable environment. As long as it lasts. As long as it lasts. So. Okay. So yeah, as I said, we should anticipate their meeting, and I'll check in with 
slam and then they um, Amy and Kemp wanted to have a conference call rather than an interim meeting between now and then so we see where they're going and, and make sure we're on track with the final design development um, and that there are no surprises with what we see in two weeks. I think we're going to try and set up a call for early next week. I'm waiting to hear from some times from them. Okay. Um, Katie had a suggestion, which unfortunately I hadn't even had time to look at, uh, about creating a shared calendar. Maybe you'd like to sure. fill us in on that one. Um, so I just thought it might be helpful um, as, as there are so many pieces to, um, to this committee and so many meetings that different people are running, if we had a shared calendar within our um, Darian email. Um, I set one up just to test and sent it to Kip and Duke and I just, I just did the month of, month of March based on the schedule that Dave Cravenzola had had. Um, but it, but it seems to me that um, it would be more efficient to have one calendar that everyone could access, and not even necessarily saying that we would all be attending these, but just to be able to sort of see it. <laughs> <laughs> but just to be able to see a week at a glance what is going on, to know that, that there is, you know, that there was a PNZ meeting or an architecture review board. Um, right. I think that that could just be a helpful communication piece that would be efficient. It can also, we can put on there, it seems to me, submission dates because, we, for example, we missed the uh, ARB submission date of the 3rd. But Jeremy said if you can get it to us by the 9th, the 9th it's okay. But I haven't heard back, we haven't heard from Amy whether she's got uh, all the stuff together for that. We'll see her in uh, 8.45 at a security meeting, but so maybe we'll ask her the question. And I had also. There's um, always the possibility of sliding in sideways. <laughs> what, what, what is that? Did you give us some guidance. You want to give us a consecutive interpretation? <laughs> I sit on the board, and all of a sudden there's a new piece on the agenda. I'm like, okay, well, it must have slid in sideways. So. <laughs> I, I meant, I had called you, and I, I wanted to get your impression of that meeting, uh, the original presentation to the ARB. I, I thought it went as well as it could go. Um, there were a couple of members that were out that you know, usually generally ask a lot of good questions. Um, I think we prep slam uh, fairly well for it so that they eliminated so many questions up front, sort of like what you're going to do tonight. <laughs> but I think that, you know, there was a, a knowledge base in the room that came from slam that basically said, this is how we, where we've come from. This is where we are now. There's a lot more that will evolve as they go. Okay. Um, there were questions on roofing, siding, you know, the, up, up the metal up top, there was, you know, where's the glass, why is the lentil pieces different on one side or another. Right. Um, there were a couple of pieces that popped up for all of us that we kind of looked at and said, well, wait a minute, we better relook at that. Well, I think that one, the canopy at the end of the bus, yeah, that's already been redesigned. With a big circle. Yeah, yeah that, that's been taken out already. <laughs> they, they quickly amended that. I don't think I have a copy of that. So, well, you were sitting in the side, side of the room, so, I mean, I think it went fairly well. I, think, I thought it went really well, yeah. No, I was just asking the uh, committee member his impression as well, taking advantage of access. Okay. Uh, I talked to a few of them ahead of time, too, just to, you know, tell them that was coming, and this is what, you know, they should expect, and I think it went, I thought it went well. Good. Good. And Slam was uh, pleased as well. They felt that, um, based on prior experiences that it, it went quite well. Um, so I, was gonna, I was gonna go back to Katie's suggestion with a calendar and I thought that was a, I think that's a really helpful tool if we can put that together. I've asked Amy to update the, um, I'm in a way the, the DD work plan that she put together presumably should act as that and had preliminary dates when she first put together a month ago. Right. So I've asked her to make that current and Great. I could serve as an alternate or a source for material for that calendar or maybe it could act instead if it's really complete. So um, and if she's able to do that and slams able to put that together, I think we can rely on them too. So Yeah, um, one of the things that I think is helpful about that calendar too, just to wrap up that conversation, is that um, there's also an ability to color code. So. I think that's kind of um, helpful to be able to see, like, at a glance, like, all the meetings in blue are town approval processes. So, like, where are we at with that versus, like, our internal meetings and those kind of things. Um, yeah. How do you, uh, it, it, uh, since I haven't 
gotten into it yet. How do you uh, limit the access to what group is it sort of? So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, basically, you can you can decide like who you invite to it, who you share with it, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be the committee, and then um, it's possible for me to give access so that it's read only, and and you guys can all view it, but no one can make changes. Right. It's possible to make it read and editable, so you could go in and change. Like there's a lot of different levels of access that we can give based on what we think is most appropriate. Okay. Um, if it's helpful, I can I can make a little outline as to like what our options are. Well, that's, uh, no. I I understand now. That's great. I think we ought to put it together. The, the key would just be that um, that everyone is sort of contributing what meetings that they're in charge of to make sure that we're able to have a complete calendar because if things mm -hmm. aren't on the calendar, then it's not serving its purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I mean, for example, this past week, we uh, on Monday, we I was here getting out the letters to the abutters for the ZBA meeting. And it had to go out between Monday and Friday. Okay. But, you know. Randy was in, in California, so I said, I'll, I'll take care of it. But we got it done, but it's one of those things. If it's on the calendar, we'll know it's got to get yeah. done and something to it. Yeah. Great. Um, no, I was just going to say, I think it's a terrific idea. We have these calendars at work, and they're right. in, indispensable. To, but I think your points are about uh, maintaining the calendar is probably the most. It's easy to set up, but you got to get everybody in the rhythm and habit of contributing to it and all of that. So. We're, We'll need to be diligent if we want to maintain it and keep it useful. Okay. Um, before I open up to the public, is there any other business that we want to talk about this morning? Rusty. Contract update with SLAM. Uh, we received an update on February 8th, which was a Saturday, so it was technically uh, the 10th. Uh, unfortunately, this is from our last meeting, which was in middle of December. Uh, unfortunately, our town attorney had a family emergency that took her out for two weeks. Uh, she's back. Uh, we've reviewed it. Uh, we finished our complete review and SLAM will have their, uh, our comments uh, probably, maybe today, latest tomorrow. Uh, we're still got a couple little issues, but nothing major, so I anticipate we could even get it signed off next week. And the, you want to talk about the addition? And then we have uh, the what? The uh, additional thing? The additional <coughs> yeah, request we, as, for additional funds. Yeah, as you remember from one of our last meetings, uh, during that December meeting, they requested that we uh, consider uh, additional <coughs> compensation for them for their work. Uh, we discussed it for a, a little bit and asked them to put together a presentation to justify such a request. Uh, we received that this week on Monday. Um, we'll be reviewing it uh, hopefully either at the end of tomorrow or beginning of next week and, and get back to them very quickly on it. It'd be nice to have a contract. Yes, it would. And we've only got uh, Three more to go. Yeah, that's all. Anything else on the, the business at the end? Received? Solar panels. Yes. I will get today uh, the cost of uh, moving those solar panels and or removing the ones that overlap on the roof and just take them off and rewire. Uh, so we should be able to make a decision uh, very quickly on how that is going. Uh, that Those are really our only two options at this point. The technology is so old, uh, so old, it's only 11 years old, 12 years old, but it is old in solar terms, uh, so that moving it to another school uh, isn't going to happen. Assumption of, of the ownership by a smaller company, which we looked at, is not going to happen either, again, because of the technology. So it's going to be either move the offending panels someplace else on the roof that's going to stay, or just removing them completely, cutting down on the output, and keep them for two years, which we should do, uh, and then they will be gone. Because we don't have to pay until we get rid of them entirely. If we get rid of a few of them only, yeah, uh, so that our output is 
lower than it normally is. Yeah. We, I have not discussed this with. Uh, oh, there might be a partial payment. There may be a little bit of a payment, but it's not going to be much. Yeah. Are there even two years from now, is there any resale value? Very no. little. Very, very little. And that should be. A, we've yet to decide where that cost is going to be. Is it part of our construction cost, or what is it? Where is it? And what I learned also, I interesting, is remember we talked about the height of the parapet yep. around the, the new roof, and it, if you wanted, we were concerned that if you wanted to, to uh, uh, maintain or service solar panels, they would require a 48-inch parapet, where it normally is just a 36-inch parapet. It turns out, because of the new panels, which are all integrated, that the, they can be closer to the parapet without having it to be higher. So I, I'm not sure that's totally correct yet, but that's what the in, initial indication came back, right, Mike? Yes. So, so, which is another cost savings, you know, basically, we hope. Uh, is there anything else that want, people want to bring up? Dr. Adley, Mike? Um, in regards to the generator, it's at Hot Ridge, um, the C CES, the engineers for SLAM, um, the generator we have is fairly new, but it won't fit into what we need. So um, I did turn all the information on the generator over to Ed Gentile, the DPW commissioner. Right. Um, and he's looking now to see if uh, there's a place the town can repurpose it, you know, in one of the town buildings or a firehouse. So uh, we're pretty sure it's going to get reused. Okay. Good. So we have the security meeting uh, in another 45 minutes. Um, that seems to be going well. I'm guessing that there's going to be some discussion that the building committee is going to have to make around the use of the glass um, in terms of how much of it is designed one way, ballistic or otherwise, not to get into the terms of it. But uh, so, so I think that that's going to, there'll be some decisions to be made there because there's a difference between how much you do it and where you do it. Right. Uh, so that remains to be seen. Today we'll be looking at additional security and the location of cameras and continuation of we'll probably get a price actually of of what our first responders want suggested. Would like to have to go from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <see. laughs> it might be a big number. Yeah. Uh, any public comment? No public comment. The next meeting will be a Thursday. March 19th, 2020, we'll have the, uh, you say we'll have the presentation from Slam on the design development. That's my understanding, yep. That's a good one to, to make. No other business, might I have a motion to adjourn? Duke and Sean. Okay, thank you.